Hi everyone, welcome back. Today is another DIY bridal tutorial. This time we are doing a nice, fresh, minimal look. For those of you who don't want to go like all out glam on your wedding day, but you still want makeup that looks put together, polished, and maybe just an elevated version of yourself. If this is your first time to my channel, welcome. I'm Morgan. I am getting married this spring, so I've been doing this bridal tutorial series on my channel as I kind of explore different bridal styles on myself and figure out exactly how I want to do my own makeup on my wedding day. I also spend a lot of time on my YouTube channel creating content related to conscious or mindful consumerism, and cruelty-free beauty. So if any of that sounds interesting to you, I would love to have you subscribe before you go today. And now let's go ahead and jump right into the tutorial. Okay, so as I said, today we are focusing on kind of more fresh, light, minimal makeup, but that still looks like makeup for a wedding day. So we are still going to be using some key products throughout the tutorial here that are super, super important for weddings or other special occasions when you want your makeup to last a long time. So I'll be pointing those out throughout the way, and then I'll kind of talk about options for the other products that I'm mentioning. But one of the key products that I would recommend is some sort of makeup primer. I don't wear a primer beneath my foundation on like a daily basis, but when I know I want my makeup to look extra flawless for photos and I want it to last for a long time, a primer really, really helps with those things. Depending on your skin type, you might wanna look into a hydrating primer if you have really dry skin or a mattifying primer if you have very oily skin. But one type of primer that I find is pretty universally helpful for things like weddings is a pore filling or smoothing primer. So one of my favorites is the NYX Angel Veil Primer. I just kind of pat this into my skin on any parts of my face where I have obvious lines or pores or texture. So for me, that's like right on my cheeks here. You can see my pores more. And then I have some forehead lines as well. And this will help just make sure that your foundation will apply smoothly over top of everything else. Next up, we're gonna move into some complexion products. So that's things like concealer, foundation, powder, bronzer, blush, etc. So everything except your eyes and lips, essentially. And even if you don't wear complexion products on a daily basis, I generally do recommend them for most brides just because it will help even your skin tone, even if you don't have a ton of discoloration, redness, acne, etc. It still provides a nice, smooth, even canvas for applying things like blush. Photographs will emphasize any sorts of texture or discoloration on your skin, so going in with a nice, even canvas is super helpful for later. If you don't feel super comfortable with that, of course you can skip those steps or do them sparingly. You can kind of pick and choose from this list I'm providing. But even if you want a really fresh, minimal makeup look, I really do think that a solid complexion is a good place to start. First up, I'm using the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer just to provide coverage underneath of my eyes because that's where I have the most discoloration. That's where I have these dark circles. So for me, that's where I like to use a concealer. On an everyday basis, I tend to put my concealer over top of my foundation. However, for more of a minimal look, I like to go ahead and conceal the areas I know I wanna conceal with this first. And then I just go in with a light layer of foundation over the top to kind of even everything else out to a lesser degree. As you can see, I use a very small amount of concealer. I just wanna use the smallest amount of product that will get the job done. And I like to put the concealer on, let it sit for about 30 seconds, and then blend it in. You can tap a concealer in with your fingers, with a small brush like I'm using today, or even with a damp sponge. A damp sponge will remove some of the coverage. That's just a note. If you prefer that style of look, absolutely go ahead and use a damp sponge. I like my fingers or a brush to maintain that coverage. I take my concealer across my nose as well. 
because that's the only other part of my face where I have quite a bit of redness. So I like to just add a slight, slight kind of thin layer of concealer, just whatever's left on my brush to my nose so that when I put foundation down, I don't have to do spot concealing afterwards. Now, if you're super opposed to any type of foundation, just know that you could just go with the concealer and lightly dust it all over your face with a less dense brush or a sponge, and you would get a nice light, thin layer of coverage for you to work off of for the rest of your makeup. Again, I'll just reiterate, I do recommend a foundation, but it's not a 100% necessary step if you don't feel comfortable with it. If you're like me and you want to look fresh and dewy and minimal and glowy, but you still also want to feel very confident that your makeup's going to look good throughout the day, I have one foundation in particular I would recommend, and that is the Makeup Forever Ultra HD Foundation. This foundation is technically a medium coverage. However, if I blend it in with a damp sponge, it shears out to just a little bit below a medium coverage, kind of more on the light coverage end of things. And for me, that's like a perfect sweet spot for a more minimal makeup look that still provides a beautiful even canvas for the rest of your makeup. My particular color might be a little dark for my skin tone right now, just because it's more of a summer shade for me. So forgive the shade match issue here and um, really just focus on how it looks on my skin. I might always blend my foundation down my neck and onto my ears a little bit for special occasions because a camera will emphasize any differences in skin color. So just blending your um, neck color and your face color together will help ease that transition. So hopefully you can see that it doesn't look like I'm wearing tons and tons of foundation or like my makeup is caked on. It still looks very fresh, very skin-like. It just looks like my skin, but better. And that's what I love so, so much about that foundation. Before moving on to bronzer, blush, and highlight, I want to set down some of this makeup. Using a powder on top of your foundation and concealer will really help your makeup lasts throughout the day and stay looking fresh into the night. So I am using the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Powder today and I'm just taking a very small brush and kind of swirling it in the cap that has a little bit of product on it. I tap off the extra and then I especially focus it on the parts of my face where I know my makeup wears off first. For me, that's underneath of my eyes because I have fine lines under my eyes and so the makeup will settle into that spot if I don't powder it. And then I also powder on my forehead, again, where I have lines, where the makeup tends to settle. And I powder my nose because it's for some reason the part of my face where my makeup always comes off first. So you might have to do a little trial and error to figure out where your makeup rubs off first throughout the day. And I would highly recommend powdering at least those parts of your face. Now I have very dry skin, so I don't always powder like the perimeters of my face, but today I'm going to just to demonstrate to you how you could do this if you either have more oily skin or you're just very worried that your makeup will come off throughout the day. You can always take a nice big fluffy brush and again, swirl your brush a little bit in the product, tap off the extra, and then just pat it gently across your whole face. The key with powdering is really to just use nice light layers. So you just don't want to over apply. It's a little bit hard to get the excess off. So just use the smallest amount possible on your brush and you should be good to go. Okay, we've got a variety of optional cheek products. I will say you are going to want to wear something on your cheeks. You don't want to leave it bare like this because your face will look very flat and one dimensional and a little bit lifeless in photos in particular but not all cheek products are for everyone. So I will be talking through each of these today and you can kind of pick and choose what you think fits your aesthetics the best. 
First up is bronzer. Bronzer is basically a lightweight powder that's a couple shades deeper than your natural skin tone that you use to warm up the parts of your face where the sun would naturally hit you. So this really helps to bring back structure to your face after kind of using some other products that make your face look a little more one dimensional. So I like to put bronzer underneath and onto my cheekbones. I also put bronzer right on the curve of my forehead where the sun would hit. And then I use it to sculpt my jawline just a little bit as well. I chose this particular bronzer today. It's the Nabla Skin Bronzing in the shade Ambra because it's a very sheer powder. So you can really build it up on your face a lot before it starts to show up too deep. So this is a really good option, a really good formula for people who are kind of intimidated by this sort of product and want to make sure, you know, they don't over apply too much bronzer. Next up is blush. I have two different blush suggestions here and it'll just depend on personal preference, whether you want to pick one or the other. My first suggestion is the Kaleido Cosmetics Skin Blush in the shade Prima Donna. This is a really beautiful pink blush. It's going to look like a really natural flush on a lot of people who are around my skin tone. It also has a really nice sheen to it. So that's really nice because it adds a lot of life and brightness back into your cheeks. The other blush I want to recommend is very, very similar for a lot of reasons, but a different color. So this is the Milani Baked Blush in the shade Luminoso. This is a really beautiful orangey peach blush, again, for people around my complexion. And it does, again, have that slight shimmer and sheen so that your cheeks look really alive and awake. And the last cheek product is highlighter. Now, because both of those blushes I just showed do have a slight sheen to them, you could definitely skip this step if you'd prefer not to, to include one more thing. But if you love extra glowy cheeks, I would highly recommend the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is a really natural kind of candlelit glow sort of looking highlighter. It's not going to be like a stark stripe of highlight across your face. It's going to be very natural, very gentle, and add just a little bit of extra glow. So I am going to apply all three of these products just so you can see, but just know that you can kind of pick and choose. I would say definitely don't skip blush. Even if you don't wear it on a normal basis, it really, really brings a lot of life back into your face and helps with the structure of your overall uh, like jawline and cheeks. So it makes a huge, huge difference, especially in photos. I personally also love a good bronzer, so I'm starting with that. When I'm going for more of this like fresh minimal vibe, I definitely love to put my highlighter underneath of my blush. It just makes it look more one with my skin. So I'm taking the highlighter now on a smaller brush to apply just to the high points of my face. And then last up, I'm going to layer the blush over top of kind of both of the bronzer here and the highlighter here. I'm going to go ahead and just bounce back and forth between these two shades and wear them both today. So I hope you can see that cheek products don't have to be really, really in your face or bright or clownish. They can be super refined, really, really beautiful, and just add a really nice fresh glow to your skin. Now at this stage, regardless of which of the steps I've shown you've kind of picked and chosen to use, I highly recommend going in with a setting spray that will help extend the wear of the makeup you do have on. My top choice for special occasions and full long days of makeup wear is the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. I just spritz this on my face 
a couple times from about six inches to a foot away from my face. And then I like to pat it in while it's drying with my sponge that I used before, just to really lock everything into place. Let's talk about brows. In my opinion, brows are a complete non-negotiable when it comes to being photographed. Having your brows properly filled in and locked into place all day helps to frame your face so, so well. They're such an important focal point of your face. Even if you have, you know, thin, sparse brows, they are such an important kind of demarcation line on your face that without having them filled in properly, I think it really makes your face fall flat in photographs. For a long day, like a wedding, I highly recommend using a combo of tools. The first thing is some sort of brow pencil. Mine is super, super tiny. They're normally bigger than this. I'm just getting to the end. Um, using this to fill in any sparse areas of your brows and then following that up with some sort of brow gel that will really lock everything into place. I'm using a tinted brow gel today, but you can absolutely use a clear brow gel that won't add any more color to your brows if you feel like it's getting a little too overwhelming to have color from both the pencil and the gel. Step one for me is always to brush through with a spoolie to get everything going the direction that I want. Then I go in with the pencil and fill in sparse areas. I brush through with a spoolie one more time just in case there are any like chunks of product to make sure it's nice and even throughout. Then I go in with my brow gel and just brush that through my brows and make sure everything is placed exactly where I want it to stay the whole day. Now on to eyeshadow. This is the part of the makeup look that I think really turns a bridal look from either very fresh and minimal like we're going for today or super, super glam. I think up until this point, a lot of the steps would have been the same regardless of what type of look you're going for, but getting a more minimal eye look that still is providing definition and excitement to your eyes is a little bit tricky. So today I'm gonna to show you how to really get that nice defined look without it looking overboard, over the top, or too glam. So step one here is going to be to take the same bronzer that you used on your cheeks and use a kind of small fluffy brush with it. Using the same tones on your cheeks and your eyes is one trick to make things look really like fresh and minimal because it looks as if that color is actually just naturally occurring throughout your face rather than looking like, oh, there's the eyeshadow, there's the blush, there's etc. It looks like those are just colors that naturally occur in your skin. So I'm just taking that little brush, coating it with some of the bronzer and tapping off the extra. And then I'm patting that on this outer portion of my eye. I kind of focus it on like the outer one third of my eyelids here to deepen things up just on that outer edge. So you can see already that there is a big difference here, right? The shadow of my eye here is just deepened ever so slightly as compared to this side. And it really brings a lot of focus and attention to my eyes. So I am just going to build that up a tiny bit more, make sure it's right along my lash line here. Using a nice, loose, fluffy brush like this is key because you won't apply too much product in one place and you can really blend and buff it out so there aren't any harsh lines. Truly, you could leave it at this, add some mascara, and call it a day if you want a really, really minimal eye look. I would highly recommend adding some sort of shimmer to your lids, though, so I'm going to give you two different options here for that. Option one is this little Aether Beauty Mini Ametrine Crystal Palette. I adore this little palette. I think it's such high quality. It's really, really beautiful shades. Whoops, this is always in my way. <laughs> and the shade that I would recommend for a more minimal, fresh look is this rose gold shade down in the bottom corner. This is an absolutely beautiful shimmer shade that is going to be not too bright and in your face and not too deep and sultry 
for a look like this. It's going to be just the perfect wash of a nice light shell pinky shade. My other top recommendation, if you don't want to purchase like a whole palette like that, is to get this single super shock shadow from ColourPop called Amaze. And this one is more of a neutral peachy brown. So um, just a slight difference from that one from Aether, which is more pink toned. This one's a little more peachy brown toned. So slight difference there, but same concept applies. It's not too bright and white and stark, but it's not too deep and dark and sultry. It's somewhere right in that very kind of like neutral mid-range shade for someone with my skin tone. This is one of my all-time favorite eyeshadows just ever in the entire world. I adore this eyeshadow, so I would highly, highly recommend it to anyone looking for just a beautiful topper lid shade for a special occasion. I think I'm gonna do a little combo of both, just why not? So I'm gonna tap just the smallest amount of this rose gold shade on my lids first, and I like to just use my fingers for this. And that's what the rose gold looks like all on its own. If that's too pink for you, then I would say lean towards a maze instead, which I'm just gonna tap over the top a little bit here to show you this as well. Yeah, that combo is gorgeous as well, but a maze is definitely a little more neutral, so you can see it toned down the pink of that rose gold shade a little bit. I love both. I think both of them look very bridal and still very fresh but it's just gonna come down to your preference on color. The last step here is to go back into the bronzer with that same fluffy brush you used before, and then you're gonna pinch the brush and run it just below your waterline here to add a little more definition to your lower lash line as well. One last very small optional step. If you chose to use a highlighter on your cheeks, you can take a little bit of that same highlighter on a very small brush and pop it right on your inner corner of your eye. It's just going to brighten up your eye look a little bit, even more. I'm going to do the other eye and apply mascara, and then I will be back for lips, which is our last step. I will, for mascara today, be using the Essence Lash Princess Waterproof Mascara. I would, of course, recommend a waterproof mascara for your wedding day. Even if you aren't the most emotional crier out there, I think it's good just to have the reassurance for yourself that your makeup is not going to run off your face if you do tear up. Okay, I am back with eyes done. I do want to just mention that I am not applying false lashes for this look today. I personally feel like my eyelashes are thick enough and dark enough and long enough after mascara that for a more fresh and minimal bridal look, I am perfectly happy with how it looks just with mascara. If you do want to apply false lashes, I will link in the corner up here a tutorial I have on applying false lashes to yourself. And one of those steps includes applying an eyeliner, just so you're aware if you wanna go false lash route, you almost always have to also go eyeliner route. So that's just kind of a word of warning for those of you who are going more fresh and minimal. Using eyeliner and lashes kind of takes it from fresh and minimal pretty quickly into the more dramatic area. Not that I dislike that, I will absolutely be wearing false lashes on my own wedding day, but I wanted to keep it truly more fresh and minimal in this tutorial today. Last up, we have lips. And again, I have some options for you here. Regardless of what lip color you choose to use, I would highly recommend a lip liner. In fact, oftentimes a lip liner can replace a lip color. If you find a lip liner that you really like the color of, you can just fill your lips in with a lip liner all the way, and it's going to be very long lasting because that's what a lip liner is intended to do. But a lot of times lip liners are more comfortable on your lips than like a liquid lipstick or something would be. So you still get that staying power, but it's a little more comfortable. My favorite lip liner that's really affordable and super user friendly is the NYX Slim Lip Pencils. I have the shade Nude Pink here today because it's like a perfect my lips but better shade. So I really like this as a lip liner under anything when I don't really wanna change the color of the lip product I'm using 
or I just really want to look and feel like myself but a little bit more elevated because this is almost the same exact color as my lips. So I'm going to lightly line my lips with this and I'm not going to fill them in because I do have two lip products that I want to share as great options for a more minimal makeup look. Alrighty, so I have two different lip options here. The first is a more classic lipstick. This is the MAC Cream Sheen Lipstick in the shade Modesty. This to me is the most classic, kind of plain staple bridal pink that you could ever ask for. Again, really similar to a natural lip color for me, and it's just a really comfortable formula that lasts a fairly long time on your lips before you have to reapply. Adding an actual full opaque lipstick like that will elevate the look a little bit more. So if you're wanting to feel just a little bit more amped up than the look is currently, go ahead and add that lipstick. If you're wanting to keep it more natural, I highly recommend the ColourPop Just a Tint lip colors. These come in a fairly wide shade range, but just know that they're all a really sheer formula. So they don't have like that opaque impact on your lips. They just tint your lips a little bit to add a hint of color to make your lips really pop on camera and things like that. But they're not going to add kind of that opacity that a traditional lipstick would. I have the shade Gimme Some More, which is like a nice warm neutral shade. So this is MAC Modesty. It's definitely more of a pinky tone. And you can see it's opaque. You can't see my hand through that at all. It's completely, you know, an opaque shade. And over here is the ColourPop Just a Tint. And you can see that if I tilt my hand kind of in this direction, you can sort of see my skin through underneath. And that's because it's a very sheer product. I am going to go with the ColourPop Just a Tint today. And that is it. That is the finished look. To me, this look screams minimal, fresh, natural bride. I look done up. I look like just a more elevated version of myself. I look like I'm going to my wedding, but I don't look like I have layers and layers of makeup caked on my face. I don't look too glam or too dramatic. I feel like this is really a nice, sweet middle ground. I hope you enjoyed this video today, and if you did, please consider giving it a thumbs up down below, leaving me a comment to let me know what your bridal makeup aesthetic is, and please consider subscribing before you head out today if you haven't already. Thank you so, so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye.